Hello and welcome back to the continuation of round one of the European Masters Disc Golf Championship, a prestigious event where the best players in the continent gather to represent their countries on the biggest stage. We are happy to be bringing you round one back nine MP40 feature card brought to you by MDG Media. I'm Connor Wood and with me, Stanislaus Aman. Oh yes, here I am, happy to be here. Hello Connor, hello Disc Golf World. We have a card full of legends, we have seen some good scores on the front nine. I am ready for the back. Absolutely, quite a technical course and the stage is set, you see the standings here. KJ on our card has snuck his way into solo lead with a pretty hot six, six down through the front nine. Very impressive, a lot of players including Eric and Tapani on our card tied in second at five under. A tight battle. We saw Emil have a few struggles on hole 7 and 8, but otherwise some very solid play. I think all of these guys ready to shred the back nine. Definitely, definitely. I think there's a lot of scoring holes on the back nine, so should be a lot of birdie opportunities. Here we start with hole number 10, 120 meters. Basically just a high, high as a shot. There is a small gap to hit but you're just looking to throw an overstable distance driver forward, let it fade to the end towards the basket and hopefully get another birdie. We have Tapani getting it started for us, has a lot of height, will allow him to have a lot of fade to the left and you see that coming up just a little bit short but a tall order to get all the way with both distance and fade. We'll see KJ give his chance now. Yeah. I'm not sure if this is like pushing borderline max distance for some of those players. It definitely plays far. It's definitely a full rip with a distance driver. As you also need to play it quite high to really get the width to the left. Keiji shows us that he has all the power needed for that shot. Very clean line found by our leader. We go to Eric now. This Cutting it significantly more inside. Yeah, this was a early release, I think. Maybe some trouble. Probably a chance for a power, but maybe maybe some awkward stance or some kind of low ceiling air bouncy shot needed. Emil rounding up the group. And he cuts the corner nicely. You see that steep hyzer angle and a good speed. Comes up, looks to be just shy of circle one. Gives himself a long yet open look. I think not a bad result on this hole. Eric left with a lot more work. Opting for the forehand under the ceiling. Clips it on the way and leaves himself also very far. Could even potentially be going again in the order. Yeah, after a very clean nine by the Hungarian legend. He is really in danger to take his first bogey here on hall number 10. But he has still a long putt. Oh, he even needs to go to the sidearm. And I think he accepts the bogey there. Not looking to push too much. Not looking to compound the errors from the previous shots. Emil with a great bid there. Just a little bit low. And on his hyzer angle, that's just a matter of millimeters or centimeters difference to sneak over. KJ with another very confident putt, getting a quick birdie there. Yeah, definitely a good one to get. Taking some strokes on his flight, maybe also on the whole field, who knows. The Pani with a good par save. see as you touched on the first bogey for Eric still in a very good position able to attack this back nine and put together a very solid round as KJ continues to push ahead what do we have here Stan this one is a hard one 120 meters basically just straight very small gap a lot of woods a lot of bushes very low ceiling as well there is potential over the top route i'm not sure if anyone is going for this there's like kind of a flex play over the top that might be like easier if you will want to go all the way to the basket but this low ceiling tight little gap here is really hard to push through all the way 
this 120 meters. We can just watch KG here. This was a very nice effort still. Finds him way outside the circle as he is a little bit early on the fade. And we saw KJ just successfully park the 120 meter hyzer. We see this 120 meter tunnel shot now offering a lot more difficulty. And we see both of them finding inverse sides of the fairway. It's funny there going left side. Yeah, I really think this is a, a very rare parody here. So um, definitely a bonus. Many people might play this just for par. And yeah, Emil with a very nice, nice smash just down the middle. Pinpointing that late gap very nicely and some beautiful angle control there. We go to Eric now. Certainly a demanding hole. We see another slightly early release and he will be finding the rough. Likely going to need to scramble again. And we'll see what he's left with. We go to Tapani here. Yeah, also leaving a little bit of meat on the bone. That's not a park chop yet, but a chance for par for sure. Eric with a nice forehand upshot. That's definitely closer. Should be a manageable par from there. Let's see what KJ has left. Oh, a healthy bid. Really nice, just that any stepper under the low ceiling really managed it well, but a tough window. Tapani able to secure the par there. Also no damage done, as you mentioned. Certainly a bonus birdie. Very demanding, the three. An absolutely fine score to walk away with here on 11. That was a meal for his birdie. After an amazing drive, going to be leaving him with similar distance putt on the way back yeah Emil unfortunately a little bit of struggling with his putt this round as Eric just taps in his par we will see two more pars of the other guys not really a whole lot of score separation here in the group on this hole And we see that as well. The friendly par frame, no swinging of strokes here on 11. Hole number 12, pretty short par four, 130 meters, but a very strong dog leg. It's a pretty gettable birdie, but you need, your play, need the place to drive just past that mando and then attack the green should be kind of a mid-range mid-range hole maybe we see a forehand from Tabani I don't know really interesting shape of a hole KJ really riding the momentum here of a solid front nine has a nice placement shot up the pipe it's a lot of ground play. That should in that angle a little bit difficult. You think he's in a good spot? Yeah, that should be a good spot there. Yeah, that's doing the job as well. Maybe a bit far. Tournament director just jumping away from the shot. Greetings to Dani Hatvani, good friend of mine, organizing most of the big events in Hungary. And just, yeah, bringing the European Masters Disc Golf Championship to Hungary, which is actually quite a big thing for a country with not more than 50 disc golfers, I think. At least what the PDJ um, says. As we see Eric there, after some early releases, has a significantly late release still needing to find himself in a safe position, most certainly just playing for par at best now and is able to navigate that late Mando. Yeah. The Should leave him a look, we go to Emil. Once again showing that he is really 
strong on his mid-range straight shot game. Another look for birdie, maybe he can correct on the putt this time. Cage here as well, with a very nice laser towards the pin. Some great touch on display here throughout the whole round. Tapani, a little bit blind, he fired quite long with that forehand flex, but shaping the one angle hyzer around the corner, beautiful awareness and a great touch for him as well. Yeah. You can really see here the beautiful scenic of this course, the Sarvash Arboretum. I think it's the biggest botanical garden in all of Hungary I've read. So really a nice setup for such a course. Smooth delivery to the chains for Eric. A very nice par save there. Gave himself some work to do and for Emil, unfortunately the timing of the putt just not quite synchronizing, having a lot of very high and late releases. We'll look to see him find the timing. Tapani doing just that and putting his round to six under. A nice pace that he's able to set as well, just behind KJ at the moment. Yeah, totally. I think anything around double digits is really a hot score on this course. You can see it's not that much about length, more about placement, the technic technicality, but definitely not that many gimme birdies at all. Some great woods and park style golf here at a his historic venue. We see KJ left with that tap in for just a brief moment. One stroke in the lead puts that to two now as we go to the next hole. Yeah, hole number 13. Strongly right turning shot. There's different options to attack this basket. Obviously the forehand line is an option. There's also the high mid-range turnover which um, can be thrown to the, to the circle quite well. Also the roller game might be an option. Let's see how our masters attack the basket. KJ has a great command of the roller but looking to shape the air shot here is able to fight through quite fortunately, really could have found some rough there, not hitting the gap, but certainly a stress-free three for him, I believe. Tapani here, our strongest, strongest guy on the side of the group, just really taking advantage of that skill. Great shot from Tapani, showing his versatile skill set. We go now to Emil. Really trying to shape this a long turnover flight. Gives it the height and the turn. But you see the difference in shape for the backhand relative to the forehand is that requiring that late leftwards fade or at least flattening out, he turns it a bit too soon and will be left at an awkward length with the low ceiling of that guardian tree. Eric here looking to use the width as well, but a little bit low and underturned finds him similar to KJ, just at the edge of the bend. Yeah, forehand definitely is the easier shot here to shape on this fairway. So we see a lot of upshots from Eric and also KJ. Let's see what, what Emil is going to be left with. KJ might be giving this one a little run. Yeah, not trying too hard on it. Just gives it some nice float and keeps it safe. Emil now has another chance, but once again, just off to the right side, although the timing looks to be quite well adjusted there. Strokes on folks for Tabani, taking a, a stroke on the whole group. Nice birdie, moving to minus seven. As we see here on our feature card, four nations represented. Sweden, Finland, Denmark, and of course, Hungary. Really an exciting tournament. Thank you to all of the organizers and directors who put in the hard work to make this happen. Hole 14, rather short one, 85 meters, basically just a straight shot 
with a slight turn to the right. So mid-range is a preferred play on the backhand side. Forehand, definitely a valid option as well. Maybe even the better one. So there's also kind of a Heiser crash line, I think. Not sure if that is still there. Let's see how our players are gonna attack this one. Yeah, and speaking about this international event, it's really nice on this um, European Championships when, when every nation also wears the team uniform. I really like to see that. It really brings a kind of special feel to the whole event. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, what you wear is closely related to how you feel and how you play on the course and being able to represent your nation, perhaps adding for some a little bit of pressure, but for others potentially motivation, and for most people probably some mix of both. So a really exciting opportunity for all of these athletes making their national teams. Absolutely, and here we see some pretty decent t-shirts. Emil got a little bit lucky here, fighting through the bushes. Let's see if we can have another birdie putt, I was about to say, but no, unfortunately, Eric is gonna have another scramble as the Scandinavian guys are all looking for some birdie putts. And he does hit that late gap, fires a little bit long and to the right. That is a tester range, but it has been his throwing him, finding him in trouble. He's been fairly solid on the green, and we see this chance for him now to save his par beautiful wow honestly i'm quite wondering what is the number of outside circuit putts we've seen so far on the round it must have been quite a quite a few and we haven't seen too many inside the circle misses but one for kj there I think these guys have certainly been racking up the circle too, looking almost as comfortable as they do in C1. Speaks to their experience here. Yeah, for sure. Competing in the MP40 division, this technical course really allowing them to show their strategy and skills. Absolutely. I think all of them are playing definitely longer than a decade, maybe several decades. I don't know the exact numbers, but KG obviously plays for many, many years. Also, Emil Eric as well, so not so sure about Tapani, but some legends of the sport here represented at our feature card. Kechi tapping in a nice par. As we move on to hole number 15, par 5, 230 meters. It starts with an Anheuser t shirt. You really need to make sure to find the grass. There's like woods on the left and on the right second shot is basically just a straight one getting some distance progress here on this beautiful fairway third one third shot should be a left turning shot basically as a right hand backhand player you try to hyzer into this gap you can see over here to find the circle and hopefully get your birdie I think this is one of the easiest holes on the course. Might be eagleable. It's not that long. With a big t-shirt you can get yourself up in position. Let's see how the guys do it here. Another great chance to end strong here in round one. Potentially picking up another birdie on the scorecard. Tapani relying once again on the forehand for that left to right shape and Really nice shot there. Great progress and very safe the whole way. Really hitting the tunnel quite purely. Yeah, perfect position. Let's see how aggressive Emil is going to be here off the tee. This looks like a quite aggressive line. You can see him touching some branches. Is he going to fade back? Just slightly on the left side, but that's still birdie position. So nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, I think enough distance for him to really still push. We see KJ going a really high with a lot of understability. Even potentially looking to lay down a bit of a thriller or maybe flatten out at the end. We see him right center fairway, though. Great result despite not seeing most of the flight, I think. Just held the long turn. 
and another shot just on the fairway should be still in decent position to attack. Just a little odd run up for Eric, but quite a good second shot. There's still a possibility to get the birdie from there. KJ here. Pretty solid spot, center fairway, opting for the enormous hyzer. Plays it high and wide, looking to crash into the green. And he has a lot of progress there. Yeah, that should Not be too a, much distance remaining. Yeah, yeah, that should be a really short scramble for the birdie for him. Yeah, that was a little bit early. Maybe not that easy on the next shot. Couldn't quite see where this that is, ended up. Yeah. Emil's tee shot, really, he was very far left with the hanging branches, forced to play it wide. Will be left with kind of a tricky upshot, a lot of obstacles in his way. Eric to the green. Drops it in. Beautiful shot. Really nice speed control, I think, from all of these guys. A very noticeable... Uh, skill that they have is just very solid speed control. We see Tapani here shaping the forehand roller to scramble out of the woods. Let's see. This must be Emil. I think he was a little bit long on the second shot, but can manufacture a forehand out here. Finds himself in the circle, inside the circle. Putting for a birdie, so yeah. As I mentioned in the preview, it's most likely one of the easier holes, but still a kind of a challenge as there's a lot of woods down the fairway. Yeah, who's up first to get the birdie? We saw a poke out from the woods there. I believe Tapani, we go now to Emil, who is able to cash it in. Very nice, had a unideal position off the tee but some fantastic angle shaping there is able to still find his birdie you see eric left with this short distance man i love watching this masters play it's really nowadays as we are used to watch the young guns all the time it's really a nice little thing just alternate and watch the 40 plus division they got it for sure. Absolutely. Certainly some incredible collective experience, wisdom, and skills here. You mentioned over a decade on many of these players, if not all of them. It's a great example of their skill set and experience as we go here to hole 16. Yeah, 115 meter. It's a big turning Anheuser. There's also a good roller option. Maybe it might be reachable with the forehand as well. The basket is tucked under those trees, so there's some low ceiling at the end. If you just crash it high on the Anheuser, you need to rely on your luck. Hitting the tree and falling down at the right place. Not the easiest birdie, but definitely a gettable one again. I guess three Anheusers and a forehand. Emil looking to shape the backhand here. We see this long turn. If he can pierce that late gap, look to be quite nice, but that ceiling is so demanding. Way down there, we see him catch a late branch and fall straight down. Yeah, I think with the backhand end, has you need to be a little bit lucky on the end just to clear those low ceiling branches. KJ also coming up a bit short. Having a long putt to save his birdie. Eric playing that roller that you touched on. We see him get this up to flat off the cut angle. Going to be curling right towards the end here. But you see that effectively a very straight pushing roller. Wanted it to turn over earlier. Although certainly not a bad position. I think fairly manageable for the three. And Tapani as well. Quite a conservative spot but center fairway yeah we definitely got some chances to see some more of those c2 champers 
You see that low ceiling really coming into play on the green as well, particularly if you are not super close, which is very hard on this hole as we see all four of these guys left to contend with this well-guarded basket. Eric off the trunk. We go to Emil here. He's using the height to putt and does in fact connect with something. Yeah, that dropped <laughs> dropped straight off the uh, off the sky basically after hitting some some kind of branch. KJ just inside the circle connects on that birdie. He is on minus ten already after sixteen. Incredible pace, looking like he wants to defend his title. And we see there from Eric a chance for the par just a little bit low. We'll be finding his second bogey here off the back nine on hole 16. Really impressive play by KJ, sitting at double digits with two to go. Tapani almost able to match him this round, sitting just two strokes behind him at eight under. Does have two holes left if he's looking to end strong, but already has put together an incredible round. For sure. Hole 17, 85 meters, just a straight shot. It's actually an island green. It plays as a hazard if you land in the OB. The island is quite big though, so you should hit it. Yeah, not much more to say about that, I think. Preferable play, most likely a mid-range, as there's a little bit of a low ceiling. So, let's see. KJ up first, does find some late branches, but able to give himself an open look. Has been very solid from that range throughout the round. Certainly an opportunity for him to continue pushing the pace. We see Emil now. A little bit more of a forwards movement before the fade and a touch more distance. Yeah, that's also just fine t-shirt. I'm just quite surprised that everyone goes with this slightly higher route. I thought like the straight route is a little bit more open. Maybe there's some branches we cannot see that well now from our perspective. And the Pani with the unfortunate OB coming up short of the island. That's definitely a mistake you shouldn't do, and he will not be happy about it after putting together such a good round until now. Eric denied by that tree as well, also not making the island. Tapani there really went for a super aggressive Anheuser angle, likely with something mega overstable. Just didn't quite find the flex, and we see his jump out there. Both of those guys will be left with the tap in bogey. A very polarizing hole here. And KJ almost connecting off the band gives it a good chance and he knows it. So last chance for a birdie here. Emil, give it to us. That was quite close. It's really a round of the left, left chances for Emil. I think he will most likely not be happy as he showed up here with the high rating at 1015 no bird is on and hole 17 yeah. that's quite surprising yeah certainly a manageable one and not just no birdies but also two bogeys for both Tapani and Eric there some damage done as we move to our final hole of the round yeah the final one is also the hardest one on the course it's a Rather long tunnel, you know, you need to clear here to get out to the open again. Must be more than 100 meters to, to be clear of this tunnel. Second shot, there's a lot of a B on the right side, there's a lot of rough on the left side, and it's basically a high as a shot around that corner to the basket. The basket is not visible from your position of the um, ID landing zone, so hard to also get the correct distance on their approach. A lot of room for mistakes, I would say, on this one. And we see KJ with the head off. He's focused, he's dialed in. He's put together an incredible round and looking to extend that here. Look at this beautiful piercing shot. The man yeah. is on fire. What a shot. That is, that's it right there. Amazing, that will leave him with like a spike hazard approach. Second one, but definitely a chance for birdie from there.
Emil here playing for that soft turnover, really ensuring to push it straight. Does find himself safe, although just barely clear of the tree line. Potentially some awkward footing, but on that right side will open up his second shot if he can find the distance from that position. Yeah. Pani also getting one up to flat nicely. Most likely, if you're not out of that mouth, there's not really a chance for the birdie. So I guess both the Pani and Emil will just play for a par. But let's see. Maybe they can prove me wrong. Eric here just attacking the gap with a really nice little hyzer flip. Can he make it out? Almost, not quite. That would be a scramble as well, I think. And we go back to Eric now. You see just how tricky it is for him and opting for the backhand. We haven't seen him rely on that forehand really very much this round and he opts to just pitch up there. We see Tapani who is slightly more open to his throwing stroke and able to push the distance a touch more. Very reasonable shot there that will position him for his par save. His next shot into the green, hopefully, and this is Emil. Yeah, this is kind of a dangerous run. You see the bushes to the left. Yeah, that's really what you shouldn't do. Those bushes are like uh, really the, the worst almost on the whole course. So this is most likely, most likely a bogey for Emil. KG on the other hand here with the high spike highs are attacking the pin and almost hits the bullseye. Amazing. Really nice. Eric now looking to make his way to the green. Also spiking one in. And we see also a great width and speed control, even with some friendly ground play at the end. Good shot for Eric. Tapani kind of routine upshot, leaving it a little bit long here. But still, we have seen him make so many good putt he, putts. He should be safe on that one. So Emil, yeah, just the pitch out here. It's honestly quite a good pitch out because it's so rough in there. It's almost like hard to get in and even harder to get the disc out somehow. Gives it here. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I, th I think he wanted that one. After pitching out, the par save would have been an incredible yeah, way to end yeah. the round. That was a solid attempt. Oh, well, likely. Oh, yes. Tabani basically finishing where he started. Just a lot of good and spinny putts. I like it. And completing his round at seven under. Really nicely done for our finish representative here on our feature card. We go to KJ to hit 11 under for the round. I think this is also for the solo lead as Anders Svert out of Sweden has put together 10 down. So congrats KJ, amazing round. We see Eric able to save the par, had a fantastic start and then found some troubles on the back nine, but also still very much in play for a solid tournament finish. And Emil there. Good to see him make that final putt. His struggles today really were on the green. Throwing off the tee was quite strong. So let's take on the let's take a look on the leaderboard. What do you see, Connor? Yeah, we see KJ, as you mentioned, stealing the solo lead in first by one stroke over Anders in second. Both of those guys have separated themselves by a few strokes from the field. Tapani here, his seven under, finding him tied for third with Ron. That is your lead card settled for round two. Some really exciting action and a fun course that will challenge even the best in Europe here in Hungary. It was a pleasure. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're feeling extra supportive, you can also check out the Patreon. Your support is what helps make this coverage possible. And Stan, always a pleasure. Thank you, Connor. It was a pleasure. Three more rounds to go. See you out there. Thank you, everybody. Bye.